This is Scott, the Fix-It Guy, and today I want to talk about five very common mistakes that people make with appliances that can be very expensive. And hoping that with the use of this video, it can save you a lot of money. Uh, the first one, number one, that's very common and very expensive is when people load up their front-loading washing machines with the wrong items. Uh, very common that people will put in Things like uh, weighted blankets, which are pretty common now, they want to clean them, or bathroom mats, or sleeping bags, pillows, a variety of different things can end up really damaging and uh, being very expensive for your washing machine. Bathroom mats are probably the most common that I'll have to come over to a person's house and see if I can help them fix their washing machine, but unfortunately, I usually have to let them know that the machine is so damaged due to the heaviness of the bathroom mat that it's basically beyond repair because it's be so expensive to fix it. Usually what happens is the bathroom mat is so heavy, it has so much surface area, it absorb, absorbs so much water that during the spin cycle, it's going about as high as 1200 RPMs and there's so much sideways centripetal force placed on it that the back part of it, called the rear bearing, has so much force placed on it that it wears out that bearing. And then when you start using your washing machine on spin cycle, it's so loud that you can't even be in the house anymore. And uh, the other thing that can happen is that the bracket that holds on to the back of the spin basket, called the spider bracket, because it kind of looks like the arms of a spider, the welds that connect it can break loose. And if that happens, the spin basket isn't held securely anymore. And as it spins, you'll get like this banging sound. And that's the, the metal um, spin basket banging against the outside plastic tub. Both of those are, are so expensive to repair, mainly due to the hours of labor necessary. It comes in around $500 or more, that it makes more sense at that time to replace the washing machine because there's other parts of the washing machine that can also be wearing out. So if you fix the spin basket, uh, the rear bearing or the, the spider bracket that had broken, then you know maybe another part will wear out soon after. So these machines should last maybe up to 12 years, but a lot of people are finding out that even at four years, their front-loading washing machines are uh, just so loud during the spin cycle that they can't even really use it effectively anymore. Every week I'll have people uh, send me a video of their washing machine that's making a loud noise and I can tell by the by the sound uh, that it's either a worn out rear bearing or it's the broken spider bracket and I have to give them the bad news that it actually makes more sense to replace it. So that's number one is being careful not to overload the washing machine with heavy items. They're really designed for just clothing and towels and sheets. Anything bigger than that, like sleeping bags and uh, like uh, dog, a dog bed is a common one that people wash. They just have too much weight and during the spin cycle, there's too much force and it makes the machine wear out. They're really not designed for those items. They're really just designed mainly for clothes. So that's number one. Number two that kind of goes along with that same genre. If this video is helping you, please consider pressing down in the lower right hand corner of your screen, the subscribe button and that really helps our channel. Uh, is the dryer. So very commonly what happens with dryers, it's very expensive, is that a little part inside of them called the high limit breaks or pops. It's kind of like a fuse. So when the dryer gets too hot, as a safety precaution, the high limit should shut off the heating mechanism. And a lot of times people, when the dryer is no longer heating, they assume that that's just the end of the dryer and it's reached the end of its service life and they end up throwing it away or putting it in the landfill, which, which is sad because usually the high limit is an easy thing to replace and is fairly inexpensive. Uh, if you look in the link here in the upper corner, we're gonna put a card that'll link to a video on how to easily replace 
the high limit. And also down in the description below, we'll put links for um, a test you can do for your washing machine to see if maybe the rear bearing is worn out. And also we'll put down in the description below uh, a link to a video on how you can test your high limit for your dryer and also how to easily replace it. The reason the high limit blows on a dryer and the heating mechanism stops is very preventable and it deals with the rear dryer vent tube. The rear dryer vent tube over time gets more and more lint that builds up inside and that lint is just little particles of the clothing that's being washed and they're moist uh, so as they try to leave the vent tube some of them stick to the outside wall of the vent tube the vent tube gradually gets more and more narrow almost like arterial sclerosis in our uh, arteries so when that gets too narrow the moist uh, hot air that the dryer has produced that's trying to get out of the dryer outside your house is getting stuck and um, the dry the clothes take longer and longer to dry and eventually they don't even dry at all and too much heat builds up inside the mechanism so the way this is prevented <clears throat> is maybe every three months or so you can use a really cool vent cleaning tool we'll put a link in the description below for that tool and also a video on how to use it it's really easy only costs about 25 dollars but about every three months, if you were to clean your dryer vent tube with this tool, your clothes will dry much faster and you'd never have a problem with this clogged vent tube. The other very expensive part of the clogged vent tube, which I hope never would happen, would be that it would get so clogged up that there'd be so much heat and so much lint within the cabinet of the dryer that either the electric heating element or the flame produced by a gas dryer actually ignites some of that lint that's built up inside the cabinet and that lint uh, burns rapidly and burns with a lot of energy sometimes with so much heat and energy that it's able to catch other things around the dryer on fire which leads to a house fire and every year there's unfortunately thousands of homes burned down to the ground due to a dryer that overheated and caught the lint on fire. So the way you can prevent lint from accumulating within the cabinet where it could catch on fire is by doing that procedure about every three months with the uh, dryer vent cleaning tool. Again, it's easy to do, fairly inexpensive, and it really does make a difference on how fast your clothes dry. This is applying for uh, electric and gas dryers. So that's number two. Number three um, is very exp expensive error. Hope you don't run into it. And that is using the self-clean feature of your oven. Um, by the way, I, before I became an appliance technician, I didn't know any of these warnings. Um, the manufacturers, unfortunately, they don't tell us not to overload the washing machine. They don't tell us about cleaning the dryer vent tube, and they don't tell us about the danger of using the self-cleaning feature of your oven. The problem with the self-cleaning feature of your oven is that the temperature inside of your oven during self-clean is so high that it can incinerate any grease or dirt that's built up inside your oven. So it does work. It does definitely clean your oven. But to get to that point of incineration, you have to reach about a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. And that's so hot. It's also sustained during self-clean for about three to four hours. That much heat, that much energy eventually can go past the insulation and damage parts of your dryer. There's another uh, part in your dryer similar, uh, I'm sorry, in your oven similar to a dryer called the high limit, which can pop like a fuse. When that happens, your heating mechanism of your oven no longer works at all. Um, the other thing that can happen during self-clean is that, that um, incineration process causes a lot of off-gassing and that gas is actually pretty pretty dangerous to breathe in it's carbon monoxide so there's um, other dangers that go along with the self-cleaning we'll put a link in the description below on uh, a video that talks about the danger of the self-cleaning and also some articles I wrote about that uh, for family handyman magazine 
So these are things that, again, commonly we don't know, and we figure that you know the, the oven is designed to be able to do the self-cleaning, but in reality, as, a, as an appliance technician with over 30 years experience, I can tell you that I've come to many homes where all of a sudden the oven doesn't work, and they ask the homeowner what happened, and they say, well, I don't know, I just used the self-cleaning feature, and now the door won't unlock, or I found out that the uh, controller no longer lights up, or I found out that I can't use any of the heat, the broil, the bake, the convection, nothing works. So really as a warning, please don't use your self-cleaning feature. Instead, we have linked in the uh, description below a really good article on some other ways that you can easily clean your oven that doesn't involve the self-clean. So number four, as a pro tip that I think can help you would be things you can do for your dishwasher <clears throat> so that your dishwasher will keep servicing you well and won't end up um, breaking down. And the main thing we see with dishwashers that is a problem is their inability to drain the uh, dirty water that's accumulated inside the dishwasher. And this is almost always caused by user error. And again, they don't get warned about this. I never knew this. My wife and I used to, used to go back and forth about uh, whether it's important to rinse your dishes or not. And before I was an appliance technician, I said, well, you don't have to rinse your dishes because they're designed to uh, basically uh, break apart food particles and just knock them into little pieces and then shoot them out the drain. And she, she would tell me, and she was right, she said, no, I don't think that's correct. I think that over time that would build up some bad stuff in your dishwasher. She's right. So we really recommend that you rinse your dishes before putting them in the dishwasher. It's kind of funny though, you don't want to really get them super clean. You want to just, if you had that uh, spaghetti for dinner, you could wash off the, you know, the noodles and some of the meat from the meat sauce. But having some residue on the dishes is actually good because the detergents need a catalyst or something to work off of to really become active to, to clean your dishes. So, uh, you know, a little bit of the red sauce would be good. So you just want to get the main um, food particles off. Like you want to get the seeds off, you want to get rice off of your plate, you want to get the spaghetti noodles off of your plate. Because these things during the uh, wash cycle they can get caught up in the mechanism, they can get caught in the spray arms, they can get caught in the drain. And you'll notice that your dishwasher over time is just not cleaning as well as it was before. And eventually it can get to a point where it doesn't even drain. And the first thing a dishwasher tries to do during a cycle is to drain out water. If there's any water left and it can't drain, it won't even start. So I come to a lot of homes to help people with dishwashers and I come to find that is just a drain problem. The drain is so full of junk that it's no longer able to get rid of the water. We'll put a uh, link in the description below on some really simple things you can do with a dishwasher if it's not draining. And this is kind of common to all the brands, so it doesn't really matter which brand you have. If it's not draining, this video I think will really help you. So we covered washing machines. Main thing is we've got to be careful not to overload them with a dryer. Number two, it's good to periodically, about every three months, use a special uh, vent cleaning tool. And again, we'll put a, a link in the description below on where you can get that and also a video on, on how to use it. And number three, this one's an easy one, is for your oven, just don't use your self-cleaning feature. And uh, your oven will last much longer and do a great job for you. Um, may, it may be a little grimier than if you if you did use the self-cleaning feature, but at least you'll be able to cook and bake and it'll keep working for you. And then the one we just covered was for the dishwasher. If you have um, a draining problem, it's probably due to an accumulation of stuff that's built up because um, you're not rinsing your dishes. So it's a little bit more of an extra step, but it's really worthwhile to go ahead and rinse your dishes before loading them into the dishwasher. So number five is going to deal with refrigerators and refrigeration. And uh, this one is just a maintenance step. 
uh, we have a part of the dishwasher called the coils, and this is where the heat that's been pulled out of the out of the refrigerator, where this heat is then dissipated out into into the kitchen, into the environment, and these coils tend to get a bunch of uh, dust and things built up on them. There's just dust in the air, and there's a fan that brings uh, air past these coils to help throw throw the uh, heat away from the coils. And with that air comes dust, and the dust clings onto the metal coils over time, so much so that at maybe if you didn't clean them, maybe at about six or seven months, it can start to affect your refrigerator where your refrigerator is working way too hard it's trying to get rid of all the heat inside your refrigerator or your freezer which is what keeps it cool but it's not able to dissipate that heat through those exterior coils they're either on the back of your refrigerator or below your refrigerator because they're just so caked with dust and it's easy to fix. You just have to periodically, again, about maybe at the same time you would go and clean your dryer vent tube, you would have this special brush. It's pretty, pretty cheap and easy to use to go in and clean the coils either underneath your refrigerator or on the back of your refrigerator. So we'll put a link in the description below on how to do that. Very easy, very simple. And those are five tips I think that can really help you in your home to save a lot of money and save a lot of headache. And uh, before I close this up, I wanna ask you guys just a funny thing to think of is in your comments, if you feel like my voice, maybe close your eyes, just listen to my voice, sounds like the actor Ray Romano from Everybody Loves Raymond, maybe you could Put that in the comments below. So a lot of my, my viewers feel that. For some reason, I, I can't get that. I guess because I'm hearing it from my ear. It it doesn't to me. It doesn't sound like them. But um, I'd be interested to see what you think. And any other questions you might have, um, you can also contact me at scottthefixitguy at yahoo.com. I'd be very happy to answer any questions you have about appliance repair. And I hope this video has um, saved you some money and saved you some anguish. And please subscribe um, down here in the lower uh, left-hand corner. You'll see a little uh, red subscribe button. If you can click that, it'd be great. And it'd become a subscriber to our channel. And also you want to click the little bell and that lets me send you brand new videos. Every time we make a new video about appliance repair, it'll come to you. So thanks again for watching and please let me know if you have any questions. Watching our video and please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance. And also click the little bell notification button so we can send you uh, weekly videos on all the different ways of fixing appliances around your home and saving you lots of money. So thanks again for watching and please also press the like button for our video if this was helpful to you. To contact me at the email listed below which is scottthefixitguy at yahoo.com with any of your questions. And also, if you need to have a uh, FaceTime meeting with me or a Zoom meeting, you can click on one of the links below in the description and we can set up a 15 minute or 30 minute video conference where we can work on your appliance problem. So thanks again for all your support and for watching the video.